Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. A club that sparks passion and controversy around the world. To some, Chelsea is just a club with no history. But anyone who knows the Blues understands that couldn't be further from the truth. From early beginnings in 1905, Chelsea has evolved through financial struggles, game-changing takeovers, and an era of sustained dominance. In this video, I'm taking you through Chelsea's origins, their highs and lows, and the impact of Maurizio Pochettino's recent spell. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive into over a century of Chelsea football. Chelsea's story began in 1905 when a small group of ambitious football lovers gathered at the Rising Sun Pub in London to launch a new club. They didn't just want to play football, they wanted to make Stamford Bridge a stadium like no other. Located in Fulham, just outside the Chelsea borough, they drew in massive crowds, including London's high society, actors, and even royalty. Stamford Bridge quickly became a cultural hub, where the future King George VI could be spotted in the stands, adding to Chelsea's reputation as a team for London's elite. So I don't really fuck with it in that way. By 1909, they were setting attendance records with 66,000 fans, filling the stands for a match against Newcastle, and they earned the nickname Moneybags for their high-profile signings. But with all that spectacle, Chelsea's journey to on-field success was slow. Fans loved the show, but it took decades before Chelsea would lift their first league title. What kept the fans loyal was their ability to make games entertaining and draw big personalities to the club. Despite some skepticism, Chelsea's early foundation established them as one of England's most exciting clubs to watch. The first true golden moment for Chelsea came in 1955 after 50 years of effort. Chelsea, under manager Ted Drake, clinched their first league title. Drake had come in with a vision that went beyond just managing players. He transformed the club. He rebranded Chelsea from the pensioners to the blues, aiming to reshape Chelsea's image from a flashy club to one that commanded respect on the pitch. The blues nickname became a lasting symbol of the club's evolving identity. Drake revamped the roster with a strong emphasis on homegrown talent, ushering in a gritty, competitive team that didn't rely on big names alone. Chelsea finished the 1954-55 season as champions of England, an achievement that had eluded them for decades and one that finally validated their early ambitions. Fans at Stamford Bridge were ecstatic, and the win forged a connection with supporters that would last generations. It set a standard that the club would chase for years to come. The 1960s saw Chelsea capitalizing on London's cultural boom, with manager Tommy Doherty creating a youthful, energetic squad that mirrored the city's changing vibe. Doherty built Chelsea around emerging stars like Jimmy Greaves and Terry Venables, infusing the club with a sense of style that captivated fans. Chelsea wasn't just about winning. They were about being part of a cultural moment. As the 60s turned into the 70s, Chelsea hit rocky ground. Despite winning another FA Cup in 1970 and defeating Leeds United in what was remembered as one of the most brutal finals in English football history, financial challenges loomed. Overambitious plans to redevelop Stamford Bridge with a massive new East Stand left the club drowning in debt. Chelsea went from being one of England's top clubs to fighting for survival. By the late 70s, financial issues, fan hooliganism, and poor performances on the pitch had Chelsea teetering on the brink of collapse. With empty seats and dwindling revenue, the club was desperate, and in 1982, businessman Ken Bates famously bought Chelsea for one pound, rescuing them from potential bankruptcy. The 70s and early 80s were a defining period for Chelsea's resilience. Survival wasn't guaranteed, but loyal fans stuck by the club, even as the club fell into a cycle of promotion and relegation between the divisions. Under Ken Bates, Chelsea began to rebuild. Though the road was far from smooth, Bates was known for his no-nonsense approach and wasn't afraid to make big changes. He focused on bringing the club back to stability, gradually lifting Chelsea from the second division and attracting a fan base that was passionate as ever. By the mid 80s, Chelsea had risen again to the first division and Stamford Bridge once again became a venue with a lively atmosphere. The club still faced issues, particularly 
with fan hooliganism. The government even considered banning Chelsea fans from away games, yet Chelsea persevered. When Chelsea defeated Liverpool in the FA Cup in 1982, the victory felt like a fresh start. Ken Bates laid the foundation for future success by stabilizing the finances, curbing hooliganism, and giving supporters hope. Chelsea's youth-driven club became fan favorites, bringing energy and excitement back to the bridge. As the 1990s approached, English football was on the verge of transformation. The creation of the Premier League in 1992 and the influx of TV money changed the game. Chelsea seized the moment to modernize the club's image, hiring Glenn Hoddle as player manager in 1993. Hoddle introduced new tactics and training methods, preparing Chelsea to compete on a bigger stage. While they didn't win major trophies in the early 90s, Chelsea had started to reinvent themselves, aiming to attract top talent and create a style of play that matched the Premier League's growing profile. Now, this, in my opinion, is the part of the story where everyone becomes a big old Chelsea hater. Of course, there was tons of hate for Chelsea due to them being a pay-to-win club and also attracting all the elite of London, including royalty and all that bullshit. But this is when Chelsea being a pay-to-win club turned into true football dominance. When people say this club has no history, I really do think it's because their club has never had a new owner pump tons of money into the club, making them instant contenders overnight. But. Anyone from Man City, Newcastle, even Fulham can't say anything about Chelsea because those clubs, just like many others, have had the same thing happen to them. An owner who pumps tons of money in overnight and changes the entire club's trajectory. Chelsea's modern identity was forged in 2003 when Roman Abramovich purchased the club. A moment that would change not just Chelsea, but also the landscape of English football. Abramovich didn't just want Chelsea to compete. He wanted them to dominate. In his first summer, he poured millions into marquee signings like Joe Cole, Damian Duff, and Claude Makélélé, turning heads across Europe. Claudio Ranieri led Chelsea to a strong second place finish in the 2003-04 season, but Abramovich had bigger ambitions. In 2004, he hired Jose Mourinho fresh off a Champions League win with Porto. Mourinho famously declared himself the special one and lived up to it. He transformed Chelsea into a disciplined powerhouse club that clinched back-to-back -back Premier League titles in 2005 and 2006. This Chelsea squad set records with 95 points, the fewest goals conceded, and an 86-match unbeaten run at Stamford Bridge. Anchored by stars like John Terry, Frank Lampard, Didier Drogba, and Peter Cech, Stamford Bridge became a fortress, and Mourinho's swagger set the tone for a new era. Despite the success, tensions between Mourinho and Abramovich led to Mourinho's departure in 2007. This set the stage for a pattern of frequent managerial changes that would continue for years. While this approach might have unsettled other clubs, Chelsea's spending and Abramovich's high standards kept them competitive. Managers like Avram Grant made their mark. Under Grant, Chelsea reached their first Champions League final in 2008, where they narrowly lost to Manchester United in a penalty shootout, a match famous for John Terry's slip during the decisive kick. In 2008, Chelsea hired Carlo Ancelotti, who brought a fresh attacking style and led the team to their first league and FA Cup double in 2010, scoring a record 103 goals in the league. However, Ancelotti was sacked after a trophyless season, reinforcing that under Abramovich, Chelsea's standards were non-negotiable. In 2012, Chelsea appointed Roberto Di Matteo as interim manager, and he pulled off what seemed impossible, winning Chelsea's first Champions League trophy. Di Matteo's Chelsea overcame the odds, defeating Barcelona in a tense semi-final before edging Bayern Munich in the final. Didier Drogba scored a late equalizer and the decisive penalty, sealing his legacy at Chelsea and giving Abramovich his most coveted prize. Though Di Matteo's success was historic, his tenure was brief. The following season saw Rafa Benitez as interim manager, who guided Chelsea to another European triumph with the 2013 Europa League title. In 2013, Mourinho returned, bringing a fresh batch of talent, including Eden Hazard, who is literally one of my favorite players of all time, and led Chelsea to another league title in 2015. 
but tensions arose again, and Mourinho's second stint ended abruptly in 2015. Antonio Conte followed in 2016, introducing a dynamic 3-4-3 formation that led Chelsea to yet another Premier League title in 2017. Conte's tactics spread throughout the league, but like his predecessors, his time at Chelsea was short-lived. After a Europa League title under Maurizio Sarri in 2019, Chelsea brought in club legend Frank Lampard, who leaned on young academy players during a transfer ban, guiding Chelsea to a top four finish. However, inconsistency saw Lampard replaced by Thomas Tuchel in early 2021. Tuchel's impact was immediate, leading Chelsea to their second Champions League title by defeating Manchester City in the final. Not a small feat by any means. Tuchel's Chelsea was known for defensive resilience and tactical discipline, and he followed up the Champions League win with the UEFA Super Cup and FIFA Club World Cup, giving Chelsea a complete set of major trophies. In 2022, global events led to Abramovich's forced sale of Chelsea, ending a transformative era that included five Premier League titles, two Champions League titles, and countless domestic trophies. Under Abramovich, Chelsea went from a competitive club to a global powerhouse, setting a new standard for ambition and investment in English football. His legacy remains both influential and controversial, as Chelsea now steps into a new chapter, tasked with maintaining their high standards and building a sustainable future. While there's certainly controversy surrounding Chelsea's business dealings in recent years, and their approach to financial fair play rules, I'll set that aside though, as it deserves its own detailed analysis. Instead, let's focus on the 2023-24 season, which I find perhaps the most puzzling in terms of club decision making. Though, I won't delve too deeply into the season's results, finishing 6th in the Premier League is in my view, a remarkable success given the circumstances. Before the season began, Chelsea appointed Maurizio Pochettino as manager an excellent tactician and leader who's particularly skilled at developing young talent. This seemingly made him the perfect fit for Chelsea's direction. The club had spent more than all other big five leagues combined on transfers, with most of that investment focused on young prospects who showed potential to become true superstars. What puzzles me is the outrage from some quarters suggesting Chelsea should have performed better given their spending. Let's break this down. You have a brand new manager known for developing young talent, the Premier League's youngest squad, and most players are new signings who have never played together before. When you consider all these challenging factors, Chelsea's achievement in securing European football is remarkable. While Pochettino and Chelsea have agreed to part ways, it's hard to imagine how the club could have asked for more this season. In my opinion, their performance far exceeded what you'd expect from such a young, newly assembled club. Whether it's the revelation of Cole Palmer, my current favorite player, or Pochettino's tactical mastery, it's astounding to me that Chelsea would let this manager leave. Looking ahead, I believe the very factors that worked against Chelsea last season will become advantages this year. True to form, Chelsea continues their extensive transfer spending, but their improvement is already noticeable this season. These young talents are showing better understanding on the pitch as reflected in their league position. I'm confident that in the coming years, these promising youngsters will develop into a dominant force in both the Premier League and Europe. It's been incredible watching Chelsea each week, particularly Cole Palmer, who's shown extraordinary talent with some of the best playmaking ability I've seen this year. While it's disappointing that Pochettino won't be there to complete what he started, the foundation he's built with this young core is undeniable. What's unfolding now is genuinely intriguing. This young squad, assembled at record cost, is starting to show why they caught scouts' eyes worldwide. The emergence of talents like Cole Palmer isn't just about individual brilliance. It's about watching a new team find its identity. Yes, there have been stumbles, but that's inevitable when building something from the ground up. The no history criticism feels hollow when you look at the full picture, but perhaps what's most compelling isn't the past. It's watching how this next generation of talent develops. These young players are writing their own story, match by match, bringing fresh energy to one of England's most storied clubs. Whether you love them or hate them, you can't deny. Chelsea keeps football interesting. 
As this latest chapter unfolds, one thing's certain. The Premier League is more exciting when ambitious young teams chase their dreams. The future of English football is taking shape, and Chelsea's new generation is right in the thick of it.